Now let's move on to research listed at Stanford, more specifically within the field of experimental astrophysics. One thing they're trying to do is detect dark matter. Now what is dark matter? It's actually a huge mystery at the moment. Normal matter you know of includes water, rocks, planets, and more, and it makes up only a small part of our universe. What they found is when looking at how the universe was structured, something was weird. When they noticed how galaxies formed, they saw that stars kind of grouped together. But that shouldn't be the case. Gravity from physical matter that we all know of isn't strong enough to do this and form galaxies. So we know there must be something else there, something that's allowing galaxies to be formed and stay together, and we call this dark matter. Without dark matter, stars would be much more scattered and galaxies would not be formed. So we know something else is in and around galaxies, but we don't know that much more. We know it doesn't reflect light, hence why it's called dark matter, which makes it non-observable by normal means. This is said to make up 25% of our universe, whereas normal matter we're familiar with only makes up around 4%. So one project listed at Stanford is the Lux Zeppelin. This is a project aimed at actually detecting what dark matter is. One hypothesis is that dark matter is made up of weakly interacting massive particles. For this project, they are going to use a detector that's about 5,000 feet underground in South Dakota's Sanford Underground Research Facility. And the Lux Zeppelin will search for evidence of these particles colliding with xenon nuclei inside this detector. If we can detect them, it will help us understand much more about what makes up our universe. But again, as of now, there's much more that we don't know about dark matter than we do know. Now what about dark energy? This is even weirder, but it's easy to see its effects. If two galaxies are just put somewhere in the universe, they should start to move toward each other due to gravity. And even if you set them in motion moving away from each other, that motion should slow down because gravity will be pulling them back in. But the opposite is happening to our universe. The universe is expanding at an accelerating rate. Gravity should be pulling things in towards each other, but the exact opposite is happening, and we don't exactly know why. There must be some energy causing this, and we call it dark energy, which is responsible for separating galaxies. We don't know why it's there or what it is really, we just know that it's there. And it makes up about 70% of our universe, more than anything else combined. And what's also weird is that this is kind of the opposite of dark matter. Dark matter keeps galaxies together, whereas dark energy is pushing separate galaxies further apart. One example of research that will help with this is the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope. This is a telescope being developed that will survey half of the sky every few nights. It will use a 3.2 billion megapixel camera and will take thousands of pictures every few nights. Then using a data system, it will compare previous images to new ones to look for changes in brightness and position, which will help us learn more about dark matter and energy, as well as other aspects of space. Also, there's a lot of research going on in computational astrophysics. This aims to bridge the gap between theoretical and experimental astrophysics. Often when it comes to space, we cannot do experiments. So when we want to analyze what happens when galaxies collide or when black holes swallow up celestial bodies, the only quote lab we have is a computer simulation. It would take hundreds of millions of years to wait for galaxies to collide and observe it, but we can use a supercomputer and program in the equations that describe these events, which would be derived from the theorists. You have to program in how gravity works, how dark matter behaves, how magnetic fields push against objects, and much more. Understanding all of this about our universe will allow us to develop better computer simulations to help us understand even more about what's going on, and you can see why understanding things like dark matter and dark energy will expand that research a lot. Now if we look at Stanford's theoretical astrophysics research, this is where they focus more on calculating and modeling the physics of the universe. In this field they do more computer simulations and hand calculations than experimentation and working in a lab. There's research going on in quantum gravity, which is a theory that attempts to explain gravitational physics in terms of quantum mechanics. Researchers are also making numerical simulations on the formation of stars all the way to dark matter. And there's actually a lot more research going on in the theoretical field, but just beyond a video like this. Now another topic being researched is neutron stars. When a large star collapses, a neutron star can be created. Neutron stars are about the size of a city, but they are extremely dense. If you took a teaspoon of a neutron star, it would weigh maybe 10 million tons. The gravity due to this is very extreme. If an object is dropped one meter from the surface of a neutron star, by the time it would hit the ground, it would have a speed of around 4 million miles per hour, and that would happen in around a microsecond. 
then some neutron stars rotate extremely fast and emit radio waves and other electromagnetic radiation around a thousand times per second. This fast spinning neutron star is known as a pulsar. Then, when a more massive star implodes, sometimes a neutron star is not formed, but instead a black hole is what is created, where the gravity is so intense that not even light can escape. Theorists are studying things like the structure of neutron stars, their spin and magnetism, and what happens when you have a binary system. There's also obviously a lot of black hole research going on because there's a lot we don't know about black holes, such as what is inside them, or if you fell into one, where would you go? and we are always looking for new formations of these within our universe. Now the list of specific research just goes on and on. For example, MIT is doing research in high energy astrophysics and analyzing X-ray and gamma rays coming from places in the universe with extreme conditions such as being a million degrees or being near extreme gravity. NASA does lots of research on black holes, dark matter and energy, the Big Bang, galaxies, stars, and exoplanets or planets that orbit stars outside of our solar system. The Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope is a telescope orbiting Earth right now that is studying cosmological phenomena such as galactic nuclei, dark matter, and pulsars. Now something I just want to touch on is that there is a theoretical and experimental aspect to these fields. Theoretical is more about making mathematical models and experimental physics is more about testing how well these models describe the universe. But notice that theoretical physics is often not an actual field of study in itself. For any field of physics, there's a theoretical and experimental component. So if you pick a field in physics, like astrophysics, then when you're in graduate school, you pick whether you want to pursue theoretical research or experimental research, just like I showed you the differences in the two for astrophysics research at Stanford. Same would go for particle physics, let's say. And also just know that there's typically more jobs for experimental physicists than theoretical physicists. And if you do go into theory, be ready for even more math. In my math versus physics video, I talk about a bunch of math classes that math majors take that physics majors don't, but that actually doesn't necessarily apply when it comes to grad school and when going for a PhD in theoretical physics fields because of how math heavy it is and you will take a lot. And I know I didn't really talk about the differences between astronomy or astrophysics or what the curriculum entails, but hopefully this at least gave you a starting point. If you like this video, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.